Hello everyone, welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Support in Smite. This is the Season 9 Conquest update. Now, this is necessary because starting positions have changed, some items have been adjusted, uh, the actual approach itself remains the same, but there are some things, some new things that should be addressed. So, I'm going to also simultaneously approach this in case you haven't seen the previous episodes, so I'll be approaching this with the idea of potentially, hey, you've never seen any of the previous videos, at least to some extent. Now in this particular situation, when you're a support, you want to see what your allies are going to need. One of the most important things about building as a support is your build should be customized to both what your allies need and or what best counters the enemy team. In this particular case, analyzing the team composition, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of auto-attacking going on. Obviously, Zanami does, but Pele kind of uses both auto-attacks and abilities, so building things like Shogun's Kusari or Talisman of Energy isn't really going to be that helpful. So we can scratch those types of auras off of the list right away. The enemy team has a decent amount of healing here. We've got Ravon with a self-heal, and we've got Serpus with a self-heal, and it's pretty likely Scylla and or Jing Wei are going to be building some form of lifesteal as well, but that will remain to be seen. But in all probability, we'll probably be busting out some life, uh, some lifesteal, some anti-heal here at some point. So we will want to keep that in mind. Um, not anything particularly heavy on the auto attacks unless Ratatoska randomly goes into them, so we won't necessarily need Witchblade or Breastplate of Vigilance either. Now, when you start as the support, first off, because we already determined that we aren't going to need auto attacks, I'm not looking for War Flag, they don't have enough healing to justify Tainted Steel early, and I'm not looking to get kills, I'm not in solo lane, so I'm not looking for Warrior's Axe, so we're going to go into Sentinel's Gift, they have predominantly physical, so we're going to start with Sovereignty. We are then going to take our 300 gold, and you can do a couple of different things with this 300 gold. I personally like to go into a Greater Cloak of Meditation, it really can help you a lot in the dual lane. Typically, you're not necessarily uh, in danger of not making it to lane in time, at least with Kepri and a physical character, primarily because you'll notice that Rising Dawn, which is what you start with as Kepri, has a protection debuff of 5, and that doesn't sound like much, but in the early game, where baseline protections, baseline physical protections tend to be at about 20 to 25, that's actually pretty significant. I mean, consider how much physical protection I have from these, 10 and 10. So 20, normally I would have 22 as a default guardian. Most other, actually, we're going to go ahead and bring up Pele as an example. 15 physical protections at the start, Merlin has even less at 13. 5 physical protection reduction is actually fairly impressive, so with this, there shouldn't really be any kind of major problem, but I'm actually going to be saving my mana here, because this isn't going to be too much of a difficult grab here. And then we're just going to run to purple, which is just going to come up now. And she's going to start it, because she's going to get in there a little bit early, there we go. And then I'm going to tank this. Also, the fact that we have Izanami is quite a big benefit here as well. That helps clear that efficiently, and just in time, yeah, we've about made it. They were slightly faster, but not by too much. This is mostly because probably the Cerberus... Well, the Cerberus could have had... No, probably he didn't have that. It looks like he bought almost all health potions. He just probably has better camp clear. Oh, yeah, you've got the quad shot, so yeah, he's going to have better clear with that. Now, what I'm going to be doing is looking to interrupt what I'm pretty sure he's going to have, which is going to be probably his Fire Breath. Yeah. And just interrupt that. We're not looking to do too much here. We're going to go ahead and use our Meditation pretty early here. Uh, because we got really slapped. He also has Meditation, but his is not the Evolved version, so that's going to mean that mine will come up a couple of seconds earlier. Hello. Now, notice that I didn't engage the Cerberus to interrupt. I just ran away. I didn't need to engage that. There was really nothing. I was going to take a lot of extra damage. Iznami wasn't well positioned for that, so we're going to just play this pretty safe here. Abduct is back up, so... Yep. We're just going to let him go. We're going to, I guess, go through this. We're going to get stunned, which is deeply unfortunate, but I should be able to survive. Yeah, that's not too bad. 
Now let's see if when we go back, we don't have quite enough yet, so we're gonna wait on that. Oh no, she's going back. Alright. They're probably also going to be clearing... Did she just speeds? Oh, she just speeds by accident. That's not particularly good. No, they're not missing. They're not missing. Thank you. Now, notice that my ward there is covering the buff. That's just to make sure that if they try to steal it, I'll know about it and can theoretically stop them. Okay. Now, I'm returning to right lane. I don't know if the Iznami is having a problem with this, but until I know for certain whether or not Cerberus okay. is changing lane, also I want to take the Void buff with her. No, nope, he's still here, so this was the correct decision. He had not left. I only use that to make sure that the camp would focus on me. There we go. And then we return to lane until further notice. Here's Jingwei, but I don't see... I don't see Cerberus, so I'm just going to... Actually, I should throw down this ward really quick. But yeah, I don't know where he is. Let me see if I can gank Jingwei really quick. Nope. Still, she's got low mana, so that's actually going to be very nice. Meditation is back up, you'll notice. She shouldn't really need any help in right lane anymore at this point. I mean, it's not like either of us died. Oh, hello. There's Cerberus indeed, which I anticipated being the case. Good. Gratitoskir is killing Merlin over here. That's unfortunate. Nope. She needs to get out of here. Can she get out of here? Okay. She's gonna die in there. She can back inside that? I didn't know that. That's very cool. Okay. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. Now I'm just going to kind of safely clear this out. There's Ratatoskr still in lane. That's fine. Dodge that. And then throw this down. Rad's not going to be able to kill me in either service. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm just looking for some last couple of stacks here. There we go. Oh, that's... Not the kind of situation we're looking for here. I'm not sure why she went in on that. Yeah, I just took a whole bunch of damage that I didn't need to. But it does look like they took out those two, so we're going to fall back at this point. Oh, she, she bamboozled me. I'll admit. I'm guessing Robin slapped? Yeah, he did. I kind of figured he would. The Pele did not warn them at all, but that's okay. Now, I got tricked by the Scylla. That was some excellent gameplay by the Scylla. I respect the death. Um, we still came out of that better than I was expecting, to be completely honest. Uh, checking the Izanami, she's on par with the Jingwei, so nothing really concerning there. I don't need to worry about it too much. Oh, she's just going to die here? No, she's not. No, she's going to make it back. That's fine. I would go over there and help, but right now there's really no point. They're there for the Lotus. He's going to be looking at the uh, wave first. Bye, I guess. Hmm. It's nice poke, but I don't think we can actually make anything out of this. Nah. Didn't think so. Okay. Good. There is Cerberus. That's going to have been cleared, yeah. Looks like she's going to go over for a gank to right lane. 
Let me see if I can discourage Cerberus from doing so. I'm not sure where he went. Where is... okay. Yeah, he did go over there. I thought he would. I should have gone over there myself. Good. Now I just need to make sure that service doesn't kill her, which she's capable of doing. Ah, here we go. She totally ran away from my healing. This should be interesting. I'm just going to try to prevent the Redditoska from getting anywhere near her. That's my primary goal. I can assume that she'll be able to, yep, take out the Cerberus. Now comes this interesting fiasco. I can grab him and get him killed. There he is. He knows I'm trying to grab him. I don't think I can keep up with him. I think he's too fast. He is the jungler, after all. Oh, shoot. Holy cow, that was close. That's right, back off. Now, you'll notice that I didn't use Abduct there. I specifically used the other one there, Rising Dawn. I missed that. That was pathetic. Alright. Where's she at? I thought for sure she was going to be... Okay, no, I guess not. I guess I'll fall back with that. Okay, that was a bit odd, but sure. Is anyone starting to build any sort of serious lifesteal? He's building crits. Ah, that changes things drastically. This means I'll need Witchblade. She's got pretty heavy amounts of lifesteal. She's going to be building lifesteal. All right, so we're going to go into Pestilence. We're going to start going into Pestilence at this point. My next item will definitely be Witchblade. I will want that. Ah, uh, no. Actually, I have a slightly better idea. Hmm. Oh, I'm gonna need Spectral, though, aren't I? Yeah, probably. I'm very likely to need Spectral. Shingwei and Raditusker both seem like they're going to be going into, uh, crits. Pretty heavy crits. Should be helping his Anami over here, but it's, yeah, gonna be too late. Got distracted by what was happening in the left jungle. Oh, he's fine, he's fine. We're alright. We are A-OK. -okay. Alright. That's fine. Nope? Okay. Oh, there's everyone here in mid. Alright. I'm actually gonna head left. I think we can get something done here. Pretty sure Ratatoskr is coming over here. I kind of figured. Activate meditation. You should be okay. Yes, indeed. Oh, hello. Holy cow, that was the closest call I've ever had on that. Get her, please. There we go. That's exactly what we're talking about. And she's going to probably die to Cerberus. Yep. I know his ult is down, so I'm not too concerned about that. Alright, I guess I'll attack. I'll go ahead and tank this tower, too, because... Oh, something to do. There we go. Now I gotta... 
I don't have mana, so I really need to be getting out of here. They really don't need me at this point over here. They shouldn't at the very least. I know everyone else pretty much was over and right. The fact that we were able to pull service, service over there was really nice. It gave Izanami the chance to do whatever she needed to do. I was kind of concerned he was going over there. Now I'm going to go over there and see if I can get a spicy gank on Jingwei. Hopefully I can make it in time. Now at this point, I'm going... Pestilence is probably going to be the only really significant form of magic protection I'm going to be building. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. First off, the only serious amount of magic damage that they're going to have on their team is... is uh, Scylla. If Scylla dies, while the Cerberus does have some magic damage available to him, he actually does hit a little bit hard. He's not nearly as hard hitting as... No, let me body block for you. Thank you. That was a really good shot. Very nice. Alright. That's all she needed there. That was fantastic. Okay, so right now we have... Why are you here? You're too late. I'm going to assume for the sake of argument, at least temporarily, that Izanami is not going to need me further in right. She might in a bit, but for now, I don't think she does. We're going to go ahead and come over here. We're going to make sure that Merlin is fine, that Cleodon is fine. They seem to be fine. Throw that down for the assists. I want to make sure I know what Cerberus is doing. What is Cerberus doing? He's not over there because he'd be at that wave right now if he was. He's probably damaged. That's why Scylla's going for it. If I had to take a guess. We're just going to go ahead and absorb some assists here. Just going to scare her off a little bit. There he is. Okay, I was probably correct that he was a damage. I'm not a, I can't guarantee he was a damage, but it seems likely. Redditas gear is coming in. You gonna make it out of there? Yes. No. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay, you're not even remotely interested in coming here. I'll just have to go to Pele. Alright, I do not heal nearly enough for that. I tried. Ooh, I'm not quite done yet. I am done. But the fact that Merlin was able to pick up Ratatos gear is pretty nice. That was devastating. Did Izanami die to... She did not. Okay, that's fine. Now, at this point, while it might be tempting to build special armor now, there's not a ton of crit. He's only got 20% here. She's only got 20% here, plus her second ability that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. But we're not going to build that quite yet. What we were, are going to want instead is Breastplate of Valor. Get that ult up faster. We're going to go into Breastplate of Vigilance here to reduce their auto attack speed, because obviously crits. Uh, possibly... Robin is go Robin's not going into that. Okay, that changes things up a little bit. If Robin isn't going to attack speed, then I don't need Witchblade or Breastplate of Vigilance. I still will need Special Armor. That's that's inevitable. I will still need that. And there's really nothing that I'm going to be able to do about that. Two people are building crits. I'm just going to need that straight up. But I, if they're not heavily focusing on auto attacks, I'm not really going to need much more. So, what I might do instead is go Bulwark of Hope for the health shield that I get from that, because that's actually quite potent. Um, I'm not going to bother with her, because I really don't think we can do anything serious with her at this point in time. Not unless she's farther away from the tower. I'm going to go ahead and buff my bolt there. Yeah, I just... Here, just I'll just tank it. Why are we not taking the... That wasn't what I was really intending there. The reason I backed out of the tower is I was hoping it would switch to... 
Cleodna and guarantee her death so she could res to me. That was the plan. This did not work out this way. Alright. Yeah, he doesn't hit me that hard. Now you'll notice that, yes, I took 1400, over 1400 damage from his basic attacks, but he was attacking me for a very long time. The reason for that is because of the complete lack of penetration. Well, he's got 10 flat here, but he's really not got a whole bunch of penetration overall. So at this point, I'm still not yet going to need spectral armor. So we're going to go into breastplate of determination first. This is going to be quite helpful. Now, I'm going to take a moment and I am going to go into Bulwark of Hope at this point. Again, that health shield is going to be very useful for me in the late game. We're really going to want that. So we're just going to pop on over to that Gold Fury. That's unfortunate, but it looks like she did take someone with her. Did they get Gold Fury? They just got it. Okay. Can we pick up any kills off of this? Zanami's finding out. No. Okay. That's a bit unfortunate, but it looks like we'll be able to take mid lane, which is nice. Mid tower, whatever. No, we're not, because they're here. I didn't think they were going to press that too hard. There was really no point to. Alright. Oh, shoot. Alright. I have to move pretty quick here. Okay. Because uh, Scylla's over here. There she is. We take mid tower, though, for it, so... Yeah? Very nice. We get him. No, we get him first. Heal up everyone up. We good? You get nothing out of this. You get nothing here. Kill her. Trying to keep him from ulting. Good enough. Okay. There's his ult, but he died right as he was using it, so that's actually roughly about what I wanted to accomplish there, so I'm pretty glad of that. Okay. Use that for a speed boost there. Throw this down. Here we go. Let me tank, let me tank, let me tank, let me tank, let me tank. Fantastic. Okay. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. We can take this for more golden experience, of course. Izanami is winning that fight in right lane, but I know she's also pushed up, so I suspect very likely she's about to get ganked. I'm going to warn her ahead of time that this is a possibility, and I'm going to go over there just assuming someone's on their way over. Well, still was back in mid. I heard her yakking. All right. No, we don't want this fight. I have no idea who else is coming in. No, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, I know the enemy spotted. We don't need anything over here. There, it, there is Ratatoskir and Jingwei. We really don't need this fight. No, 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 no. Please leave. Thank you. Try to can you you have to see the thing about supports that a lot of people don't talk about is a lot of people tend to listen to them when they say when they give commands like retreat get the hell out of dodge things like that yeah people tend to listen to supports now if somebody doesn't listen to a support that's probably a problem there are two roles that are really intended to be what I guess would call, be called shot callers. Well, primary shot callers. Support is one of them. And the reason why the support is one of the two primary shot callers is because they're typically the one to go in first. Absorb all of the shit. And from there, keep their allies alive. So, supports tend to be one of the two primary shot callers. The other, only other one is junglers because they have to call ganks. I shouldn't be here. Yeah, there's no reason for me to be here. That's fine. 
we killed somebody, and in exchange they got me, which is absolutely fine. I don't know... Oh, she popped up, that's why. I'm probably gonna die for this, but that's actually okay. They've gotten... We've gotten three, three of their damage dealers for me and Cleodna, so... That's a two for three, which is fine, and it looks very likely that they're gonna pick up somebody else here. Probably Robin. Yeah, there goes Robin, so that's a two for four, which is excellent. Cerberus is doing... I don't know what he's doing. Look at that. They just let him back. That's fine. He would take a lot of time and energy to eliminate, so it's fairly understandable that they would just leave him alone. Just leave him behind. They're going to take mid-tower. This is going to get me my bulwark of hope that I really want. Okay, we're in a really good position here. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Divine Ruin. I can kind of see it, but all right. All right, we're going to go ahead and grab a sentry ward at this point. This is because no one's warded the fire giant. We really need to be warding that fire giant. It's about the time where people are going to start looking at that and thinking to themselves, can we take that? So we really need to have that warded, so I'm going to go ahead and run over there and do that really quick. Now, typically, you are one of the two. Again, uh, the people responsible for warding the fire giant are also the shot callers. Usually, jungler or support should be warding the fire giant. Because of the oracles, you often won't need to ward the gold fury. It's very rare. In a pinch, like the oracles are down and you're really worried that they're going to go for it. Yeah, it's worth warding. This is what happened here. Uh, somebody, I don't know if it was Iznami or who, but somebody was really concerned about the possibility of the enemy team going for gold. So they warded it. Here's... That was very impressive steal. I'm not sure how she managed that, but alright. Good play. No, the Zhengwei is very good. That was excellent gameplay. We can take this, though, and grab an obelisk of our own. There we go. That's just gonna kill the obelisk completely. There's... Oh, we're still fighting this? What are you doing, Cleodna? She had no business being there. No business at all. Just take it. Just take it. I have physical protections for years. I'm, I'm going to be just fine. Do a little dance to intimidate them. There we go. I'm regenerating 10 HP a second. It's not much, but it's honest work. I thought, that, I thought that ward over there was an enemy. What I'm going to be doing right now is counter-initiating. Whoever of theirs comes in, I'm going to be wanting to turn that around on them. But it's going to take a bit of time. It's going to take a bit of patience. I anticipate... Okay, that... Never mind. We are going full ham here. Okay, that wasn't exactly how I was hoping that would go. But this does put us even now because we lost Cleodna. They just lost Jingwei. So that's a pretty decent trade there. Ratatoskr is looking to come in. Again, we'll be looking to counter-initiate that. Heal you up. Yeah, that was that was not a good... Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. It wasn't a big deal. She didn't die. It's not like we were necessarily in a good position to take the Phoenix. Anyways, yeah, if we want to fight, we'd be able to. But it was very unlikely that they were going to come out for that. Okay. She's really playing with fire over here. We can take this really quick, right? Yeah. You slap. I'm not concerned about Red Tusk here. He ch he's trying so hard. We actually have Ratatoskr in a very negative position, but I'm pretty sure he's got his ult up as well, so he's probably just going to ult out of here. It's very unlikely we'll be able to kill him off. Oh, she did it. I'm very impressed. I did not think we were going to have that capability. He just threw his life away for no reason there. That was very bad. That was very damaging to his team. I'm just going to grab some assists here. All right. And... Yep, notice Pele is zoning right now because I'm doing the primary tanking. 
Also, another really nice thing about the support... See, the support is usually the one who wants to be tanking a majority of the fire giant damage because a lot of the time, if the enemy does try to interrupt, you can lock them down with some crowd control and prevent them from either getting close to the fire giant as a last-ditch effort or use the fire giant's lava pools on occasion to do some serious damage by locking them within one. Uh, Kabrakan's good at this. Kepri's actually good at this because he's got abduct. He's got that root there. I can't remember what it's called. Solar flare. These are all really useful for keeping an enemy in a fire giant lava pool. I'm actually more interested in... Yeah. She did not use that at all. That's fairly interesting. Can we... There we go. Not a bad move. We didn't get any kills, but the fact that they had to retreat and leave the Phoenix is actually not bad. It's it's pretty acceptable. Hello. I somehow missed this. And he's dead. I, I, I did not intend to kill him there. As a support, you really don't want to get kills, if possible, because you can't convert them into damage like enemies can. Are we really going to do this? Oh, you see, you gave, the, you gave the gig away. Can we just... I'm going to get absolutely gobsmacked here. Can we relax just slightly? Yeah, that's fine. We're all right. Shingwei's going to pretty aggressively go after me with this, but that's fine. We're going to take the Phoenix. I have my ult up still. Oh. Can we just kill her, please? I'll sacrifice myself for that. That's that's fine. Shingwei dies. That's okay. Now, notice I was able to cling to life long enough to do that because of Bulwark of Hope. You can see it's countdown. It triggered right before that. I really used the health shield there to carry that off as effectively as I did. Now I'm going to need spectral armor because if you'll notice... Oh, he converted. He changed everything. Oh, that's a bit different of a story. I'm not necessarily going to need... He completely switched up his build. Okay, we will not need spectral armor then. With just Jing Wei as the only critical damage... It's just as easy for me to build Hide of the Nemean Lion, block the basic attacks outright. Alright? And that's a little bit more effective because that'll also help me against random damage from other sources as well. So we're just going to build Hide of the Nemean Lion over Spectral Armor. It's a little bit more physical protections. It's not as much health, which is a bit of a downside. Actually, we could also go with Jade Emperor's Crown. That would be fairly effective as well. We might do that. Oh, I can't now because it's already triggering the... Uh, Stacks, but that's fine. We'll use Sentinel's Embrace. Notice I've peaked on my physical protections here. That's fine. They overstayed, but we wiped out all three of their phoenixes, which is really big news. We can probably take the Fire Giant. I don't think they're going to be looking to press this because they have to deal with Fire Minions, so I really don't think they have the ability to prevent us from taking the Fire Giant. Stupid fire. The Gold Fury. I said the Fire Giant originally, too. My goodness. Yeah, they're, they're going to be so busy dealing with fire minions that they're not even going to be looking at this a lot. of This is usually how this is going to go. So I'll just tank this up. And, uh, you know, Merlin is going to do the job. There we go. No problem. Yes. But we should be grouped up first. I don't want to go in there with half the team and just die. That's just not going to work out in our favor. Merlin is being way too aggressive about this. Now, I'm sticking with Merlin just because he's the one closest here. I just want to make sure he doesn't get killed or something. I thought that Jingwei was going to aggressively fly onto him and just absolutely slap. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Now, I need her dead, because she's going to be the big damage to me. There we go. That's exactly what I needed. Yeah, I'm taking damage. That's fine. Now that I know that she's the major source of physical damage, my... Auto attack blocks from Hide of the Nemean Lion are just completely free now at this point. And now I just gotta keep the enemy off. There we go. Now, 
Hide of the Nemean Lion, you know, I'll discuss that in a bit. So, essentially, why was that so successful? Well, first off, I had excellent allies, and that's pretty important as a support. You aren't supposed to do that much damage. Maybe once in a while, there's a, a guardian or, or a support that'll do a small amount of damage. Ymir is a really good example of this. Splashing a nice gilded arrow on Ymir for... Yeah, they probably gave up at the end. Um, pardon me. Um, anyways, more to the point. Raditas Gear is very salty. Anyways, um, ignoring that for a hot second. Your allies are the ones that have to deal the damage, and that's, that means you have to rely on your allies to do the damage. Now, I was very lucky where my allies were there when I was setting up a fight, most of the time. There was one in the early game, I, I actually called this out, that I didn't know where Merlin had went. Um, I think it was about the, f it was between the 10 and 15 minute mark, I can't remember off the top of my head, I was in mid lane, no towers had been taken at that point, I don't believe, um, and I grabbed, I think either Redditoskir or Cerberus, no, it might have been Scylla, I can't remember who it was that I grabbed, but I, I mentioned that I, I didn't need to be there, that I was alone, and that I'm not sure why Merlin had left. Um, something along those lines. But other than that one instance, uh, people were there when I needed them to be, which is what you really want as a support. Jingwei, not Jingwei, Izanami listened to me when I told her to retreat when we were in the jungle there, which was really nice to see. Again, supports are one of the two primary shot callers, the other one is the jungler, but Cleodina really wasn't calling any shots, so it was up to me to do so. The solo is a secondary shot caller. If the support dies or if the jungler dies, the solo lane is supposed to step in and fill whatever role that person was doing. This is actually why solos build a hybrid of damage and protections most of the time is because they're kind of supposed to step in and fill either the jungler role of eliminating the squishier targets or the support role of tanking for the team. Either way, the solo should be a secondary shot caller to replace whoever dies. Right, The mage really shouldn't be calling shots because they shouldn't be initiating, and it's the same thing for ADCs. They should not be initiating and should not be calling shots. That's basically why the mid and the ADC are not shot callers of any stretch. They're not supposed to be initiating the fights. The jungler, the support, and the solo are all the ones that initiate the fights and therefore are in the best position to call shots, to call fights. All right, so just that's just a general rule of thumb. There are exceptions to this exceptions to this rule. If the ADC or the mid are more experienced than a lot of the other players or if nobody else is stepping forward to call shots, then yes. Uh, now you'll notice that I didn't necessarily make VG uh, VGA calls uh, during this match. As support, a lot of the times you don't. It's kind of assumed that when your support goes in that you should be going on to that person, whoever your support is on. And these, all these players were experienced enough in Smite and in MOBAs in general to know this and react accordingly. Notice that when I went on to somebody, they all, for the most part, dumped on that person. That is what you want as a support. You shouldn't need to have to call attack most of the time. Maybe in rare occasions you should. There was that moment at the Phoenix line there, where I wasn't calling attack, and that's primarily why they didn't go in, except for the Pele, who was completely nuts, but, I mean, she carried it off, she made it work, but, uh, yeah, they, most of us, you know, you'll notice that the Merlin and the Izanami weren't going in, they weren't going hard on that, because I hadn't called that, nor was I up there going in, because I knew if I went in, I was gonna die, and we weren't really likely to get anything at that point, we weren't far enough ahead of the enemy team to justify a Phoenix dive at that point in time. So I didn't make the call. Pele saw an opportunity for a quick kill, gets the kill, I res, she leaves. Now, if I didn't have my ult up, she would have died for that. And that is exactly what I was concerned about as a support. That I would go in, die, and nothing would get accomplished. At the very least, it would have been a trade if I didn't have my ult, but I had my ult. But that's why they didn't go in there. And that was a great example of 
how you should really respond. So I was very lucky with my team here. I, I really have... I really did get lucky with these teammates. This was fantastic. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about the... Uh, comparing me to Cerberus. Now, keep in mind that the Cerberus was clearly sitting under Fountain for the last couple of minutes. Um, I would say after we took the three Phoenixes, I think the Cerberus was... It was a, approximately the time that we took all three Phoenixes um, that the Cerberus stopped playing. But before that, you'll notice that the Cerberus has a lot of kills here. Now, there's two reasons for this, um, and one reason, well, one primary reason why it's a problem. Now, the Cerberus might not have intentionally picked these up as kills. Based on the fact that the Cerberus picked up the Divine Ruin, I would kind of say probably Cerberus wasn't averse to the idea of picking up kills. Now, why is that a problem, right? Because in theory, a kill is a kill, right? You know, you're eliminating an enemy, and you should take whatever you can get, right? Uh, partially. That applies if the support is the last person there able to pick up the kill. There's no one else on your team around to pick up that kill, right? You know, say the support is the last, last character standing on your team, and there's two enemies left and one of them is really low on HP, the support should try to take that person out and then leave, because first off, they're the support, they should be tanky enough to be able to just walk away from the other person, usually, and uh, second, no one else is going to pick that up. Uh, actually, in my warm-up match before this, um, the enemy support was a Ymir, who was building a really good support build, you know, very classic support, and this was in mid-game, so the Ymir and I were typically in the mid lane. Um, and the Ymir started rotating when my ADC was starting to beat his ADC. Now, ultimately, my ADC wins, alright? Which is great. But the Ymir blinked in and finished the last less than 100 HP left of my ADC before I could get there in time and finished off my ADC. Now, there were no other allies for the Emir in the area, so if the Emir didn't finish off my ADC, no one else is going to. There weren't even minions around to do that. Uh, so that was a really justified kill by the Emir. But the Cerberus was never really in that situation. I think there was one kill that I would say throughout the match that the Cerberus was justified in picking up because no one else is around to do so. But just based on the fact that the Cerberus built Divine Ruin over, say, Pestilence or Contagion, indicates that the Cerberus was not averse to picking up kills anyways, right? So, again, now that we've dealt with that supports should pick up kills when no one else can, why shouldn't they in any other context? Well, primarily because, again, going back to the idea that supports don't do damage or aren't supposed to build damage, you're not really supposed to be converting that bonus golden experience into kills. You can't roll that kill into more damage, not quite as effectively. Yes, so Guardians supports typically have really good flat damage. And a couple of early game kills for the support isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not all bad. But after a certain point, as a support, you really shouldn't be picking up kills. I'm going to give you a fascinating case point. I'm going to go back to Ymir, actually. Um, Ymir has four abilities in his kit like everyone else does. Well, most everyone else. He's got his... Ice Wall, he's got the Glacial Strike, which is the Forward Strike, he's got the Frost Breath, and he's got his Ult. Now, leaving the Ult aside for a hot minute, we're going to talk about his three primary abilities. Now, in the first, I would say, ten levels, Ymir getting a kill isn't a bad thing, because he can, he can, pardon me for the stutter, he can convert that into useful crowd control. He's got his Frost Breath, which, as it levels up, stuns for longer, and he's got his Ice Wall, which, as it levels up, stays for longer. Once both of those abilities are at rank 5, 
he really can't roll any more kills into anything even remotely supportively useful. Glacial Strike's slow that it provides does not increase as it levels. The only thing that Glacial Strike improves as it gets ranked up is its damage, right? Same thing with his ult. The damage increases. I don't think this, there He might increase the AoE slow. I'd have to double-check that, but ults are leveled up rarely enough in your build. I mean, you can only level them up every so often that it's not worth trying to roll kills into your ult. That's not generally something you want to plan on as a support. So, once he hits about level, I would say, you know, 11 or 12. 12 at the absolute latest. Ymir really shouldn't be looking to pick up kills unless absolutely necessary, as we just discussed, because he can't roll that into more useful crowd control. Now, Kepri is an interesting ex exception to this rule, and I'll go over and show you this later on once I'm done discussing the builds in the match. A lot of Kepri's abilities are really great supportively, so Kepri is one of those very few guardians who can roll pretty much any kill he gets into useful crowd control. This is countered by the- this is- well, let me rephrase that- this is balanced by the fact that Kepri is terrible at killing people, and I'll talk about that as well as- well as, um, some context for other guardians. But, by and large, that's fine. But I think that's one of the reasons that Cerberus, Cerberus's team, more specifically, was having a bit of a problem overall. Now, you'll notice that the Xing Wei has a pretty good amount of kills, but the Scylla does not. Now, the Scylla, besides having a bit of trouble with me personally, because once I abduct her, she's pretty much very much in trouble, but I believe the Cerberus was either accidentally or intentionally stealing her kills away from, you know, while he was in that lane. Um, and this caused the Scylla to fall behind the Merlin, who was doing really well. Um, now, the Cerberus's build, besides Divine Ruin, isn't actually bad. It's actually a pretty good build. Gauntlet of Thebes is pretty nice. Uh, it's always a generally favorable thing to build so uh, Sovereignty later on. Sovereignty probably should have been third, but I can understand the best play of Valor being built third here. That does give him cooldown that he can use to use his abilities more often. That's fine. That's delightful. Um, and then he goes into Divine Ruin. This really could have been a Pestilence, and he would have been doing a lot better at that point. Um... And even then, no, no, the the anti heal was justified. Yeah, I checked that originally and remembered it was just, okay, justified. But overall, not a bad thing. Um, there are times, there are certain supports I'll build divine ruin with, but those are excruciatingly specific circumstances. I'm talking you're up against Aphrodite, you're up against Chang'a, you're up against Hell, you're up against an enemy that heals the group extensively, then Divine Ruin is justified, alright? Because you're really trying to limit the amount of healing they're doing. And honestly, a lot of the times, your mage is probably building this anyways. Now, maybe this was a response to the Scylla not building Divine Ruin, but even then, before you build Divine Ruin as a support, you should be building your defensive anti-heal aura first. Let your mid know that, hey, maybe you should be building some anti-heal, maybe you should build Divine Ruin. And if they don't build Divine Ruin or they respond negatively to that, then, as a support, you would go in and build this. This was jumping the gun. This should have been Pestilence. And then while he was, well, while they were building Pestilence, mention to Silla, hey, are you building Divine Ruin? If the answer is no, or if the answer is negative or toxic build Divine Ruin, because it's pretty likely that the Ormage Mage won't. If they respond positively, give them the trust, let them build Divine Ruin. Right? That's really my issue with Divine Ruin. Not necessarily that Divine Ruin was the wrong choice. That's not quite what I'm saying. I'm saying that based on the fact that he hasn't got either Contagion or Pestilence, he was really jumping the gun here for this. And that's a shame. Um, but... Now, let's talk very briefly about converting... I'm not going to report 
Marangon, because I don't know what the story was there. It seems very confused. But let's talk a bit about Guardians, right? Let's talk about converting kills over. Now, you might be thinking, if you're familiar with Cerberus, you're thinking to yourself, well, Cerberus can convert a lot of this into really effective crowd control for his team as he levels up. Or some great other support items. That's kind of a mixed bag, though. There's a couple of reasons for this. First off, Paralyzing Spit is a very specific stun. It's very hard to actually hit this as a stun, specifically. So this isn't something that I necessarily rely on as a stun. Yes, I can hit it pretty consistently, but no one's 100% accurate. I goof this pretty often. Um, I hit... The, let, me put it, let me put it this way. I hit the stun slightly more often than I miss it. But it's still not exactly the most consistent of stuns, right? It's, it's a very specific point during the paralyzing spit. So there is some justification, but it's much weaker justification. Ghastly Breath is a far more effective piece of crowd control, sort of. The slow is nice, but really it's about the protection reduction. And this is why in the first seven or eight levels of Cerberus, he can really turn around and convert his kills into really useful, not only increased damage for Ghastly Breath, which is just a bonus, but protection reduction. Paralyzing Spit is somewhat justified, but this is where I disagree that Cerberus can really convert this. Now, Soul, Soul Expulsion is all about, well, not all about, but primarily about healing Cerberus, which is nice and all, but as a support, this is about healing yourself, right? You should be fine just getting this naturally. You shouldn't be trying to get kills and trying to convert them into more ranks in Soul Expulsion, because you shouldn't be taking so much damage necessarily that you need this until late game anyways. Um, there are exceptions to this rule, but Cerberus is a very interesting use case here for should a support should a specific supports try and get kills because they can convert them into useful things for their team. And actually, I want to talk about Kepri here. Kepri, everything Kepri does is entirely aimed around helping his allies. All right, which is a very unusual feature for even a guardian. But we've got Abduct, increased protections, longer pull, we have Rising Dawn, increased damage mitigation to hit allies, protection to buff for hit enemies. We have an extended root, and we have more revived health from his ult. Now, Kepri, in other words, can roll all kills into something useful for his team. This sounds great, but as you've probably realized from that last match, if you haven't seen any of my other Kepri videos, he sucks at dealing damage. Yes, I will give you that Rising Dawn does a moderate amount of damage. Abduct slaps a little bit in the mid-game. And Solar Flare can accidentally finish some people off. He's got the potential to accidentally finish some people off. And I did accidentally kill an enemy in the last match. But you also don't necessarily need kills to keep up with your allies. I was keeping up with my allies fairly well, even without kills. There was a moment in mid-game, there was a little bit of time that I had fallen behind. That's fine. But I'm just trying to let you know when and where it's okay as a support to maybe pick up a kill that an ally could get. Sometimes you just don't have the time, right? Sometimes it's your allies having a really hard time finishing them off. And you just gotta pick that up. Understandable. Athena is one of the lower use cases here. Now, she's got Preemptive Strike, which does have a slow, but the slow doesn't increase with ranks. So you really don't need kills here. Confound, useful because that taunt duration extends. But this is again gonna be about level 7, level 8. Shield Wall does only damage. And Defender of Olympus, although incredibly useful as a support, only really needs one rank. Your damage does not matter here. Uh, straight up. Once you put one rank in Defender of Olympus, you really don't need any more as a support. Now, if you're solo lane or if you're jungle with Athena, that's a totally different story. This justifies ranks in Defender of Olympus, but as a support, you're only really using this to give your allies some damage mitigation and get there to save their lives. You don't need the damage. So, really, Athena is one of the, use, is one of the cases where she has probably one of the easier times confirming kills, but she only really needs to do so, or really should intentionally be doing so, for the first seven or so levels. Until she can get Confound, 
I would say probably level 8 is really where you should stop trying to steal kills from your allies if you're in the habit of doing that. Um, but these are just a couple of examples that I wanted to talk about very specifically. Getting kills as a support is not always necessarily a bad idea. There is this weird uh, conception that support should never, ever get kills. It, that's not quite true. If the support can convert that kill, the experience and gold can be converted into aid for your allies, typically the experience going into an ability that gets more crowd control effects from that rank up, that's fine. But you that's a very case-by-case -case basis for each and individual support. Um, and past that point, you really shouldn't be trying to pick up kills. You really should be avoiding them. I accidentally killed an enemy last game. I didn't need that kill. Could I have converted it? Yes. Did I convert it as best as I could? Yeah, that's just experience coming in. I just slap that into, you know, the next ability that I was working on. That's fine. But, yeah, don't don't let people tell you that you should never pick up kills as a support unless in absolute dire circumstances. It's it's a it's okay in the early game. At minimum, up to level eight, I would say. And then past that, you it, past level eight, it's a case by case basis. But you should still employ caution, and you should only um. Re you should only try to confirm these kills if you think it'll take too long for an ally to do so, or there's no other option, right? There's no other efficient option. Um, but that's about all I wanted to say here. Um, thank you all very much for joining me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. And uh, if you like this, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me. And have a great 24 hours.